Get your decade ahead horoscope for your sign at NadiaShaw.com. Hello, fabulous friends, fans, and superstars. Welcome to your horoscope for the week of June 2nd, 2019. I am your astrologer, Nadia Shaw. Thank you for being here. What an amazing week it is. We have an active and fabulous sky playing out right now. And the first major celestial event to take place this week is a big one, and it is the new moon. Right around Monday, give or take a day on either side, depending on where you are on the planet, we will have a new moon in the sign of Gemini. But what makes this moon distinct is that it will be speaking with Neptune in a type of conversation that astrologers call a square. This is a conversation of tension. And with Neptune, as it is, as an independent factor, all is not as it seems, but then you add this type of conversation and it heightens that very factor. It is going to be a new moon in the sign of Gemini, and Gemini is an energy that has to do with communications of all kinds. It has to do with our uh, communication devices, the modes by which we communicate including our smartphones, our computers, our internet as well is covered by the sign of Gemini. And when we have Neptune uh, speaking this way to this strong Gemini energy, it denotes on the one hand, uh, things going a little wonky, right? If you think about last week, I talked about how Mercury, which is the ruling planet of Gemini, uh, speaking with Neptune in a conversation of tension, in a square uh, conversation as well. That was like dipping into a Mercury retrograde, even if just for a moment. Now imagine a new moon, it heightens that energy that much more. But this isn't going to be an isolated moment, but rather next week we are going to have Venus move into the sign of Gemini, uh, next week, we also have the Sun making these types of connections with Neptune, and then eventually Venus will later this month as well. And so all of this adds up to a period of time where we may not necessarily feel like our uh, modes of communication on the one hand, but even our ability to communicate and how it is that we're understanding things are necessarily uh, grounded or necessarily rooted in uh, what is factual. With the sign of Gemini ruling the media as well, it can feel like there are some uh, contradictory uh, or contrary uh, reports that are being shared and the things that we are talking about as well as a collective. We have to be mindful that some of it may actually be illusion. So that's where we need to be a little bit careful. And this includes, of course, in our personal conversations with each other as well. Uh, where it is that there may be a tendency to gossip. And think about what gossip essentially is. It is us communicating with each other, um, but it's sharing information for the purpose of being salacious or being scandalous even, regardless of whether or not the information is true right down to the detail. In fact, when we have energy like this, like we're gonna have this week, the details are the first thing to go. The first thing uh, that ends up being overlooked is the details of a situation. So we're gonna wanna be a little careful on our personal level as well. Where is it that we are indulging in gossip? Where is it that we are sharing information uh, that is not accurate. And sometimes we know that we are right and maybe we might not actually be. But of course, where it comes to information, sometimes what is shared with us is unintentionally not correct, but sometimes it is intentionally meant to mislead. And this is a tendency that we're gonna have to watch out for. And it's amazing how even us, with the best of intention, uh, with a commitment to being uh, good and people of integrity in the world, uh, sometimes can find ourselves indulging in these very behaviors, uh, passing on information that maybe we know or are not sure is actually correct, but it fits the moment. And so it becomes that much more natural to share. 
So these are going to be some tendencies that we have to watch out for. But for all that, you know, by the time we get to the end of the week, Mercury will have changed signs. In the middle of the week, Mercury will move into the sign of Cancer. At the end of the week, Mercury will speak in harmony with Uranus, which is a conversation that astrologers call a sextile. And so this is energy that isn't uh, supremely harmonious. It isn't easy in and of itself, but it is by our own actions, our own questions that we make it fortunate. And this is also an energy of truth. And so whatever it is that in the early part of the week feels a little bit uncertain, feels murky, wherever it is that we are acting from a place of our own fears, or what happens sometimes is we don't even know that it is fear that is ultimately at the root of what we're telling ourselves is our intuition. So this is again going to be a tendency that we have to be careful for, but whatever that is, by the time we get to the end of the week and this dramatic shift of energy takes place where what was foggy becomes crystal clear in an instant, we will better be able to empower ourselves to take action to move forward. And I would also say where possible, patience is the highest virtue this week. In fact, for the superstar horoscopes, I think every sign I must have said this, patience is the highest virtue this week. And where possible, um, try not to make any huge consequential decisions in the early part of the week because that same situation could look very different by the time we get to the end of the week and that burst of clarity finds us. Now speaking of that burst of clarity with Mercury moving into the sign of Cancer, well that in and of itself shifts the conversation. It changes what it is that we're thinking about and what we're talking about. And chances are we'll be talking a lot more about things that have to do with home and family in particular, whether it is talking about the value of homes and where we live and how people are living, where people are finding family and community. But there's also here um, something to be said for understanding our very basic identities having to do with uh, ethnicities, with nationalities, with patriotism. These are gonna be topics that we are talking about more and more. However, it is Uranus that sort of breaks free beyond those identities. Uh, Uranus is the great equalizer because it says that we all think the same, right? I think, therefore I am. And so if it is that your mind and your ideas stand in and of themselves, then whatever our more basic identities, whatever our shell, whatever uh, space or place in which we were born is secondary to what it is that we have to contribute on a level of intellect, on a level of mind. And so where do these two intersect? That's what we are going to see as we approach the end of the week. Where is it that our ideas about the future can be the uniting principle? Where is it that we can evolve our understanding of nationality, evolve our understanding of ethnicity, so that it ultimately brings us all closer together, regardless of our diversity or even with our diversity? Uh, where is it that new ideas can present themselves to us at this time that allow us to reconsider what family is going to be uniquely for us. Well, in at least one area of life, all of us are contemplating what family means and how it is that we're ready to take that definition and propel it into a future that feels much more evolved, that feels much more equal, and that feels much more in alignment with a sense of our highest principles that we have shared around the world. And in this way, when we consider that uh, Uranus is beyond the physical, right? It, it is an energy ultimately of electricity. And electricity is a unifying principle around the globe. It, it spreads and it unites and it is something that gives life. It is something that animates. It's understood to even animate us as people. Well, this is a force that moves through all things and moves through us as well. And that can be one very powerful definition of what it is that allows us to feel that much more at home with each other. You know, I'm reminded of um, 
I remember many years ago reading uh, Julia Kristeva. Uh, she is a French philosopher. Uh, she's, I believe she's alive and well. She's a modern philosopher. And uh, her writing style is really interesting because it is the French philosophical writing style, which means it's very circular. It goes around and around. Uh, but one of the very interesting ideas that she shared um, was in a series of essays that she called Strangers to Ourselves. And in these series of essays, she writes about all the ways in which uh, we make some people other, but we can also be other to ourselves. So one of the essays talks about how she felt being pregnant and giving birth and how that in and of itself was uh, an experience of feeling her body uh, be strange, be different. Um, how it was this interaction with and this familiarity with what other people want to reject or they don't want to look at uh, where it comes to themselves and their own bodies and how we operate and um, all the, the mush and the goo and all the things that expel from us that we don't even want to talk about, that we want to even deny, you come face to face with it when it is that you are pregnant, when it is that you actually go through childbirth. And so that was one of the more popular, or maybe not popular, but I would say one of the more impactful essays of hers that I read. In another essay, she talks about the idea of the foreigner and how it is that we project those very things that uh, we want to deny are actually part of us. And in this way, she states and she asserts that the foreigner doesn't even exist, that ultimately we are all things and it is what we most ferociously deny is part of ourselves, what we most adamantly project onto others and we make people other than us, um, that shows us most strongly what is within ourselves. And when I read that essay, I thought a lot about um, Carl Jung's ideas of the shadow and how it is that we will project our shadow onto other people. Well, all of this is to say that as I looked at Mercury moving into and through the sign of Cancer, well, Cancer is very much a sign of us, right? It is who we are. And a lot of times we define ourselves as to who we are based on what we define as who we are not. Like we know ourselves based on uh, not only the similarities we share with some, but also based on a clearly defined sense of differences that we may have with others. Never mind the fact that many, if not all of those differences are very superficial, or that essentially, I do believe that all of us are pursuing very core experiences. As part of being human, there are some very basic archetypal pursuits and desires and experiences that we will move towards, that we will desire to explore as part of the human experience. And this is universal. Wherever you go, whatever language people are speaking, whatever uh, people look like, these are very core parts of the human experience. Experiences like love, right? Very, uh, very straightforward. Uh, we all want to know love. We all want to be loved. We will pursue it in very different ways. Uh, what love has come to mean for us based on our childhood conditioning and our earliest experiences will determine how it is that we live it out. But the underlying drive is always love. We all have a need for family. The most independent among us, the most individual among us, in some way is seeking commonality, which is just another way to say family. We are seeking people who are like us so that we feel less alone. And this drive to not be alone in the world is also very universal and very archetypal, as is the desire to be your own person, to be unique, to stand apart. This is also a very archetypal and universal experience that we pursue as human beings. And so where is it that we can find a nice way or a happy way, or at least a way that brings contentment to bridge these two, our desire for commonality, but our desire for individuality. It is ultimately this connection between Mercury and Uranus that at the very least can get the conversation started. 
at the very least can help us to integrate these two desires within us and at the very least can help us to recognize some universal ways in which we truly are at home with each other regardless of whom it is that we have thought the other is. That person that we have identified, that group that we have identified as other, actually may be family to you. And we may also, some of us, have the experience of finding commonality, of finding family with people or with a person that, under other circumstances, we would think of as other. Now also this week, under the light of the new moon, we are going to have a beautiful connection between Venus and Pluto. Now this is energy I am really looking forward to. I think this is going to be a bit of a saving grace, if you will, whereas that new moon is so confusing. It's like we don't know what to believe, even as we're saying it, even as we're talking to other people. We may surprise ourselves by the things that we are actually saying. Uh, we may have a feeling that people are not being honest with us, not being straightforward with us, but we can't really identify it. But maybe it's us. Maybe it's us that's not being honest with ourselves. As much as the new moon encapsulates that energy, it is Pluto that is about truth, right? Pluto is very strongly associated with truth. It is the truth, again, that sometimes we want to deny, but it is ultimately about getting to the core, getting to the essentials, seeing through the illusion so that we understand what really matters. And Venus, of course, being in her home sign of Taurus right now, is in a very strong place. She's able to bring forward uh, parts of herself that she likes uh, that much more. She's able to operate better than she might otherwise in her own home sign. She's just stronger and able to radiate Venusian energies that much stronger for us as a collective. And so what are Venusian energies? Well, it's energies of love, right? I've just been speaking about how love is this universal urge that we have. Like once we move beyond uh, survival, once we move beyond uh, the need for uh, clothing and food and shelter, once we've addressed those very basic human needs, the next and most important and perhaps the, the need that uh, permeates all other needs is the need for love. Well, Venus is goddess of love, right? She's love of each other romantic love, but personal love as well, familial love, platonic love. It is the love of self that is covered by Venus as well. Knowing and connecting to our worthiness is covered by Venus as well. Well, so here we have love in all its forms, speaking in supreme harmony in what astrologers call a trine with an energy of truth and an energy of what is the essence, what is the core, what really matters. So what is it that really matters where it comes to love? What is it that is truly an expression of love? What is it that is truly going to allow you to feel like you have love? The love of others and the love of self. And what does love truly mean? If Pluto is anything, it is not superficial. It is the antithesis of superficial. It is about getting to the core and the truth of a matter. So what is it when we move beyond the superficial displays of love and, and uh, even expressions, even words, right? Because Gemini, the energy of Gemini is all about words. Well, under this new moon, words are hollow. Words are empty. We don't even know if we can trust the words. But what is it that our heart feels? What is it that we know to be true about whom we love and why? And what love actually is? What is it within us that makes us worthy of love? The amazing thing is that we will find is that it has nothing to do with the externals. All those external things that we identify to make us worthy, all those ways in which uh, we try to assert ourselves in the world, try to prove ourselves as worthy of love, you know, when you look at the astrology chart, Venus in an astrology chart speaks to how we attract. And so how is it that we need to be, what is it that we think we need to do in order to be worthy of love? 
And what is it that we actually do to attract love into our life? That's what Venus in the chart shows. Mars in the chart shows not only what it is that um, attracts us to other people, what qualities we find ourselves propelled towards, but also the qualities that we cultivate within ourselves uh, to move ourselves towards opportunities to connect with others on a physical level, right? What is it that is libido ultimately, uh, as Freud uh, discussed? Libido is um, the drive to procreate or the drive to connect with others on a physical level. Well, how that plays out for you as part of your unique journey, how you express that, what is it within you that you develop? Well, that is going to show up by the sign of your Mars. Uh, what area do you focus on in order to, on some deep unconscious level, uh, honor your libido drive? Well, that is the house of Mars. Now contrast that with Venus. Uh, what qualities is it by sign that you feel you need to cultivate to be worthy of love, that you feel when you display those uh, particular parts of yourself, again, as represented by the sign, that you feel you're able to be in an energy of love that much more easily, you're able to attract loving experiences into your life. And what area of life, when you're focusing in on it, do you feel most beautiful, regardless of gender or gender identity? When we focus on the house that Venus is in, we're able to feel that much more lovable. We're able to feel like we're bringing forward qualities that make us that much more attractive. And we just enjoy ourselves a little bit more when we focus on that area of life. And so now in the current context, we have Venus trine Pluto. What is it that truly makes you worthy of love? Well, it's just you, you being you, you existing, you being a, a soul in the world, you being an expression of love and wisdom, you being a living embodiment of the divine is enough for you to be worthy of love and certainly to be worthy of your own love. And that actually, that takes determination. That takes a perception and a commitment to truth. That takes a, a true willingness to see beyond the messaging, see beyond the superficial uh, uh, tokens and displays and get right to the core, right to the heart of the matter. And the heart of the matter really is that you as you are right now today, exactly as you are, right now today is not only worthy of love but worthy of celebrating worthy of being at peace exactly as you are you know recently uh one thing i do want to close with that i'm reminded of as i shared this there is an amazing uh woman that i follow online named jamila jamil i love jamila jamil she's such an inspiration she's such a role model uh, but one of the things that she really advocates is acceptance of self. She talks about that as a revolutionary act, and that's part of what I love about her. And so uh, she's on Instagram. She, I think she's on other social media as well, but I follow her on Instagram. And so uh, she was sharing something uh, on Instagram about um, women. She was sharing other women and men who celebrate themselves, who, who allow themselves to be seen as they are, um, even though they're overweight. And so she is a, a big person of acceptance of your body, of celebration of your body, regardless of your size, that you should be able to be who you are and to be at peace exactly as you are, regardless of what size you are. So she was sharing uh, some other people that she said, you know, you should follow these people. And so there were a lot of people who were sharing things like, um, you know, well, I'm overweight and that's because I choose to be because that's the way I eat. And I don't think that we should be accepting this and things like that. And I remember reading this and thinking, my goodness, like what would happen if you were OK exactly as you are? Like what would happen if you didn't have that message in you that said, you should watch what you eat or being fat is bad or wrong. Like what would you do with that energy that would be left over that you weren't expending thinking about how, well, no, we shouldn't accept 
the way that you are right now today. What if we thought that you were perfect exactly as you are? What if you are perfect exactly as you are? What would that change, right? Like how would that free up our creative energy? How would that change our ambition? How would we be able to step into our own unique beauty if beauty wasn't connected to your size? I remember many, many years ago, I had a friend, a beautiful woman, just the most beautiful woman you were ever gonna see of Puerto Rican descent. She had this huge, beautiful, curly mane, like a lion that went all the way down uh, past her hips. She was just breathtaking uh, to see. And she was telling me how she went to a spiritual retreat. And a part of the spiritual retreat was about acceptance and about accepting yourself. And what started to happen was people started sharing about how uh, they felt like they couldn't accept themselves because they were overweight and how that was so wrong. And then what these people started to do was they started to, um, you know, say, uh, say jokes and say uh, things to put down people who are too thin um, as a way of saying, well, okay, well, this, that is supposed to be the ideal. Look how horrible that is. And then at some point she got up and she said, and it was such a powerful moment when she shared this with me because I could tell how full of emotion she was. But at some point she got up and she shared that, um, she said to these, these people, these women, because it was a women's retreat, she said, you know, all the things that you are saying right now, I have been saying to myself my whole life because she was from a culture that prioritized curves, that said curves are beautiful. And she didn't have that type of body uh, genetically. She just didn't have that type of body. And she had hated herself her whole life because of that. And that was such a heartbreaking and beautiful moment for me because not only was she able to admit that to herself, but she was able to share that journey with others and to actually propel the conversation, to move it forward to a place where there could be true understanding and true acceptance. You don't accept yourself by putting someone else down. You don't find acceptance by uh, telling yourself that you're better than anybody else, especially on a superficial level. You find acceptance when you know that you are okay and when you root your identity in the divine. That is the only way I believe that true peace can be found. And maybe this new moon happening simultaneously with Venus, Trine, Pluto is going to help us all to move towards a greater sense of being at peace with ourselves as we are today. What I love about this week for us is, well, look, there's so much here, but I'm going to say that beautiful connection between uh, Mercury and Uranus. Even though Mercury is in a water sign, which tends to be very emotional, it's a feminine sign. And by feminine, I don't mean it is just about women. I mean uh, masculine and feminine as principles. Uh, as an understanding that these are energies that we have within us, both masculine and feminine uh, is what we are each comprised of. Uh, we each have that part of us that uh, wants to be confident and take initiative, which is uh, historically considered a masculine principle. We each have that part of us that is uh, intuitive, that is accepting, and that is a very feminine principle, again, that we each have within us. And it is ultimately these balances of energies when they work together that make a whole and complete and, and move us towards individuation, as Carl Jung called it. So I think that this conversation with Mercury being so much about mind, moving through a very embodied emotional sign, speaking with, in harmony, Uranus, which is all about transcending uh, even the duality, transcending gender and gender principles and masculine and feminine principles. It's about focusing more on the ideas and how it is that intellect and mind unite us. It's the great equalizer. I think that that energy is also an energy of freedom. It's about thinking right. It's about getting our head on, as they say, getting your head on straight or getting your head on uh, directly so that you can think clearly, 
And in thinking clearly, you understand or are able to acknowledge certain universal truths, certain spiritual realities. But more than that, you're able to articulate them. And with this energy, we're also going to find ourselves able to articulate ourselves, what otherwise would be just strong emotion beneath the surface. We'll find a way to express it. And in the process of healthy expression, we will find ourselves transformed, made more at peace and more uniquely ourselves. Well, thank you so much for watching. Thank you for being on that journey with me. What do you love about this week? Let me know in the comments below. I absolutely love reading you guys. Hello to all the people on the premiere. Thank you so much for your patience last week, but this week I am committed to being on the premiere with all of you. Really excited to be here live and in real time chatting. But if you're catching it on the replay, thank you as well. If you wanna know how all this wonderful stuff this week speaks to you in your sign, log on to NadiaShaw.com. Sign up to be one of my superstars. Superstars get expanded exclusive video scopes each and every week, unlimited access to special horoscopes and more, all of this in the superstar space. I look forward to meeting you there. Speaking of special horoscopes, I do have brand new special horoscopes decade ahead where I try to focus on just a couple of things that I thought would be important for you in your sign. So you can log on to NadiaShaw.com, download that. And of course, it is free to superstars in the superstar space as well. I have a huge online event coming up uh, with Synchronicity University Summer School. It's going to be so much fun. We've got a huge group that is going to be joining us. Really very excited about that. I'll be teaching five classes plus a bonus class answering your follow-up questions. And so classes will include childhood in the astrology chart, the midheaven, uh, happiness and success, which is part of fortune. Midheaven is a career and social standing and so much more that we'll be looking at. Um, I will be looking at astrological magic uh, as well and other topics. So it's going to be a lot of fun. That's just off the top of my head but I did want to share that with you. Um, I hope that you will join me online and in real time throughout July into August. But if it is that you can't join us live, no worries. You can download the class afterwards and learn from it infinitely. So I look forward to seeing you in class. And in-person events coming up, I have, uh, I will be speaking at the NCGR conference in Baltimore coming up Labor Day weekend. That is going to be so much fun. Thank you to everybody who came out to my talks in Seattle. That was a lot of fun too. I appreciated uh, connecting with so many friends and fans out in Seattle and really looking forward to connecting with friends and fans out in Baltimore as well. And of course, I have a huge event coming up uh, as part of a cruise event, once in a lifetime, a spiritual experience that I hope to share with you. We've got world-class astrologers joining us for daily uh, hands-on healing and seminars and uh, excursions as well. Uh, we will be leaving from Fort Lauderdale and we will be docking in uh, Mexico, Honduras and Belize. So it's really going to be a huge adventure that we all are going to share together. Um, you can learn a lot more about that in the links below. All the stuff I spoke about so far, you can check out the links in the description below. And I look forward to sharing that experience with you. And thank you. Thank you so much for being here. I know I got really passionate there for a moment. I got kind of caught up there in a moment, but the moment felt right to go with it. So I shared. Um, and I just appreciate so much that I have so much love and support and so many people who resonate with what it is that I have to share. It is, you know, my unique expression ultimately at the end of the day. Um, it is only myself that I have to share and it means so much that uh, for a lot of people out there, uh, they see something of themselves and you see something of yourselves and me enough to join me here week after week. And uh, it all just means so much to me. Thank you. Thank you for your trust. Thank you again for watching. It'll be a great week. Enjoy.